Hello, Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net. I wanted to put this video together for you today to kind of clarify and go more into the topic on rotational pitching and how, um, we, in my latest article, I talk about how it reduces pitching velocity. A little bit of controversial topic. Um, the, we talk even into the body planes, transverse, corneal, sagittal. Um, so it gets a little advanced. But this article has been pretty dynamic. It's gone you know, viral uh, as far as you look at uh, it's top velocity. It's probably the biggest, most dynamic site, uh, article that I've released. Um, I think in eight hours I had like 3,000 views uh, on the article itself. So it really, really took off and in Facebook uh, it was being shared a lot and it was cool to see. So um, I also got a big response. It's crazy I didn't get a lot of comments, which is weird. The comments on my site have kind of died off. Not sure why, but I'm getting a lot of emails. Maybe guys just don't want to uh, express their uh, questions on the site. I would encourage you to use that feature, pretty cool feature uh, we can all share. Um, I like debate. Obviously, I like to argue and um, compete online. That's why I, I, I love to do this. So don't feel that um, you're slandering me. Uh, you have every right to do that. I, I offer your public um, comments on my site at any time. But a lot of the emails that I got in response to the article was, OK, Brent, now it's confusing me. How does hip to shoulder separation, how does that come into play with all this? And I tried to make that clear, but this is kind of complicated. It's advanced. And like I say in the article, if you're just learning 3x pitching, this is probably not the video for you. I'd probably want to spend more time in the pitching articles, watching the uh, three-part series of 30 days to five miles per hour, even getting the program, reading the 3x pitching book, getting into the mechanics guides. There's a lot to learn um, and to get to where we are kind of at this level. But uh, if you can keep up with us, I would recommend you would. All right, so the, 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 let's just look at what these studies uh, were talking about, which was really kind of eye-opening even to me when I spent more time with it. Um, the coolest thing is it didn't change, it doesn't change really 3x pitching. I really believe 3x pitching because it worked for me um, and it's worked for so many others and I've done enough research to prove that uh, it's pretty solid. Um, that as I continue to research, the approach just kind of polishes itself and gets better. And this is one quantum leap in the program that really, really, really uh, will allow it to get better. It's, it's allowing me to get better too in analysis um, because I think I was a little bit um, not fully a clear on the transitional aspects of the body movements to the body planes, okay? So let's, let's, let's uh, go through all this. So it's probably best for you to pull up the article so you can kind of follow along. The articles in the pitching articles where you can go on Google and search um, Rotational transverse pitching decreases velocity. Um, that would pop up right there if you did that. All right, so it talks about the body plane. So we first got to understand body planes because, you know, I, I never use this terminology. I just started using it now because a lot of the research I was reading was using it. So then I started using it. So I want to teach it to you. So in the different body planes, you have um, the first, we'll talk about the corneal plane. That's going to be a lateral plane. So like if you cut the body in half from shoulder to shoulder, okay, where you'd have this half and the back half, anything uh, in this lateral movement like this is a, is a corneal movement, okay? Then we have a sagittal movement. That's gonna be anything, if we split the body right down the middle of the face, anything front and back, a frontal plane, that's gonna be the sagittal plane. Transverse is gonna be across the hips. So that's going to be obviously anything rotating um, left to right, kind of in a vertical position. So those are the planes of the body, corneal, sagittal, and transverse. All right, so that being said, we, it's kind of been conventional. If you look at a lot of strength coaches, strength coaches like to use this terminology. If you look at a lot of strength coaches and a lot of strength programs out there, they pretty much clump uh, baseball players into a transverse movers, um, unless they're talking running. They're, but when they're talking throwing and hitting, they talk transverse. 
Okay. Well, we could do that maybe in, um, you know, we could obviously do that in positions, throwing obviously from a shorter position. Um, definitely not. Um, well, actually, you know, if we look at the studies, that probably wouldn't be right. Um, but we could definitely probably relate that to a, a position uh, more than a pitcher. Um, but it's not to say that in this study that all pitchers are not transverse. It's going to just say the majority of the high velocity pitchers are not because that's what the study shows. Okay, so, but they tend to clump all these hitters and uh, throwers and, and then pitchers into this transverse movers. You know, all of this right here. Now, this is the, this is the, you know, the hip rotation, the shoulder rotation, all this, that's, that's how we throw hit in, in, in baseball. All right, so outside of hitting, and that's another thing I think why this has been kind of controversial or this article was viral is because rotational hitting is, is a popular thing now, um, and then there's also rotational pitching out there uh, or kind of torque pitching, and this would kind of go against uh, that by saying that it's, it's not that effective, okay? Let's pull up the studies. So what really spawned this or launched um, this topic was when I really was getting into learning more about ASMI's uh, long toss study, which is uh, cited on the page right there. In that study, they showed three distances. On the mound, 60 feet, pitching mound, then on flat ground at 90, actually four distances. Flat ground at 90, flat ground at 180, flat ground at close to 300. In those four distances, they recorded torques on the arm, angular velocities, which is uh, rotational velocities, um, positions, trunk tilts, um, and, and it correlated how it changed based on distances. Now, the conclusion of the study, which uh, ASMI basically advised, why they advised against extreme long toss, was that the farther the distance is, specifically when we went out to 300 feet, the less or more torques we put on the body and the less mechanics or the less our mechanics were like how they are on the mound. So the farther we went out, the less we used our mound mechanics and we added forces on the arm that exceeded what we put them on the mound. Okay, so they classified them as inefficient throws. So they advised against these throws for training and rehabilitation because they are inefficient. All right? And if you, when they, and you know, ASMI does pretty much most of the studies, and when they've studied the high velocity pitchers, they see efficiencies, not inefficiencies. They see the inefficiencies in the younger, more inexperienced uh, pitchers, not in the experienced pitchers. So that's why they advise against this. And that's why I advise against it. But that's not the topic here. What really created the topic here was also in that study, they measured ball speed. So at the same time, distances and all the other parameters, they measured ball speed. So therefore, it gave us some insight into how these mechanics not only changed on distances, but how that affected velocity. Okay, so in the case of this study, when they were on the mound, they were averaged 80, I think, six miles an hour, or, or maybe it was 87, 87 miles an hour. And then flat ground all the way up to 180. It stayed at 87 miles an hour, 86 to 87 miles an hour on average. When they went to 300 feet, the ball, average ball velocity dropped two miles an hour to 85. So there was a two mile an hour on average ball drop which if you're looking at average velocity, that's fairly significant. And that's when the distance is increasing. And that's when all the parameters were changing and the forces were exceeding the arm and because the mechanics were changing. So basically, if we look at it that way, so the study looked at it kind of in two ways. They said, here's when we increase distances, we become inefficient. But also if you look at it based on velocity, when we, when we decreased velocity, we became in more inefficient. Okay, so, and it's specifically in the study, and it's something I cited there, they said that when the pitcher or the thrower went from 180 to 300, they became more transverse movers and less, less uh, sagittal, meaning they had less of those key movements and finishes in the sagittal plane 
because they came more transverse. So they were basically saying there was, you can't have both. Once you start becoming more transverse, you lose the sagittal positions, which is so important to high velocity, which is for trunk tilt, which is front leg extension, everything that finishes forward in that frontal plane. And if you look at countless studies outside of this, that is so critical to ball velocity. Plus, if you look at like the guys that used in the in, in on the article, which are very uh, obvious in this in this position is Chapman or even Billy Wagner from the past. They're very much forward as their arms are loaded all the way back. That, that is going to be reduced if we are more transverse. So that's how I basically came up with the conclusion that if we are more transverse, because the study says it, if we are more transverse, we are less efficient, and we actually have lower ball speeds based in that study. All right, there was two other studies. So it's not just one. We had two other studies. We had the... Um, study of developmental levels, of basically the kinematic differences of the uh, developmental levels that showed the youth pitchers had actually more angular velocity in the pelvis and the hip speeds than the professional pitchers. That should blow your mind. It very much blew my mind to see that actually the youth pitcher could rotate his hips faster than the professional pitcher. Um, it, but at the same time, you didn't see a big jump in the sagittal movements, but you did see the increase. You saw a decrease in the transverse movements as they moved up levels of the game to professional level. You saw a slight increase in the sagittal movements, but you still saw the increase. They basically said what's more significant as we move from the youth to professional level in increasing ball speed is actually physical development. And that's why 3X pitching is big on our strength programs, our strength and power programs our performance enhancement aspects of the program. Um, and just that being said, there's, there's, it's probably one of the only performance enhancements velocity programs out there uh, that get into the physical development aspects of it. But so let's, let's, let's get back into these mechanics. One more study that found that in a single age group of high school ball players, this is the last study that I've cited, that they had the same um, uh, angular velocities of the hips. The speed was the same in the same age group in high school. But the high velocity group compared to the low velocity group actually had more, um, or, or their, their hips actually rotated earlier. So they had the same hip speeds, but the high velocity group got them to go before, or peak just before the low velocity group. So that's where hip rotation is important. That's why we talk about it as being important. It has to come early, specifically just before front foot strength, which other studies show too. It doesn't have to come aggressively because ultimately that's actually going to work against us. The aggression should be more in the linear, linear movements. This is where we get confused. So just because triple extension is going to give us an aggressive move and maybe some aggressive hip rotation, we've got to make sure that it's more linear focused than transverse focused. And that's where this has kind of really helped me in my video analysis. Um, Hip to shoulder separation is still very important because it's a transitional part of the delivery that's going to tell us what's going on. Are we going to get the power of the stride into the finish, into the sagittal plane? That's why hip to shoulder separation is important. But you've got to understand that it's not the only thing. If I see a poor corneal lateral drive and great hip to shoulder separation, I might be too transverse. So it can't be the predominant movement. And that's with this case study or what this article, uh, or why it's been so dynamic and why it's revolutionary, because it's telling us, and it, and it helps me clarify a lot of the discrepancies that I see in video analysis when I go, hey, good hip to shoulder separation, why not good ball velocity? Because those tend to be the guys, and when I would go back and look at those guys, those are the guys that don't have the aggressive or the explosive corneal, linear, sagittal movements to go with that hip to shoulder separation. And that's the key here. So saying that transverse rotation um, is, is going to reduce velocity for a pitcher doesn't mean that you just don't even rotate. That has nothing, in, that's not what we're saying. So please do not confuse that. What we're saying is it can't be the predominant movement. Okay? So you can't start right out of your delivery rotating to get right to hip to shoulder separation. So if I went right like this, Great hip to shoulder separation. I'm going to finish vertical. I'm going to finish more rotational. 
and I'm never going to generate the linear forces. So that's the point here. So let's show an over-exaggerated movement so we can get the differences here. This would be what we're looking for, which is we want to be aggressive explosive in the corneal plane and the lateral move, and then we want to convert into the sagittal plane just before we hit front foot strike. The only way we're going to do that is we've got to then go into transverse rotation just so we can convert the, later, later, the lateral move into the sagittal move. Okay, so we want to be very aggressive in the corneal plane, hold, rotating late so we can keep that force moving into the sagittal plane, but the transverse rotation should just be a transitional part as we go from corneal to sagittal. Okay, it's confusing. Play this over four or five times, think about it 10 or 20 times, and you'll get it. Okay, it just, it's not predominant. It has to be transitional, okay? The dominant movements are corneal, sagittal. The transitional movement is transverse. Doesn't mean it's not important. It just doesn't mean it's the dominant movement. It's not the primary movement, all right? So let's, let's do that example so you can see it. So this would be what we want right here. Really aggressive, corneal, boom. Land and separation. So this is waiting for that energy to move up from that corneal leg drive, and then boom, it explodes out in the side of the plane, or boom, forward trunk tilt, external rotation, and the pitch release. That's what we want, okay? So that's gonna be <coughs> the predominance of the corneal leg drive, the linear power, right there initially in the delivery, converting to the transverse rotation into the sagittal movement. Now, here would be the what we don't want, this would be the other example. This is just the, would be just being transverse. This is going to be very over-exaggerated. Like I said, it's going to be very rotational, rotational. So we go right into hip rotation, hip to shoulder separation. See, I'm like a hitter now. I'm a hitter. And then I throw from there. Okay? I'm not going to obviously go into sagittal movement because I'm rotational. Hmm. So that's what they were saying. They were seeing, or the data was showing, as distances increase, we got less of this, we got more of this, and more of that. Everything finishing up right, being more rotational, predominantly through the delivery, primary movement being rotation, and that put more stress on the arm and reduced velocity. That's how the point we're trying to make here, that's why this is revolutionary. We can't be too rotational. We have to be predominantly linear. That's triple extension. That's a linear leg drop. That's front leg extension. Boom, okay? That's the high velocity pitching. All right, so I'm getting kind of fired up here because this really, really, really pulls it together. When you look at 3X pitching, 3X pitching, and it shows the superiority of this approach and why it's so effective in generating ball speed when you're more linear than rotational, like a hitter, okay? All right, so I hope this helps. Kind of pulled it together for you. Hope this clarifies it for you guys. I'll post this uh, at the bottom of the article and um, might even put it on another page as well um, for you guys to watch. Um, and if you guys have any comments on this or you want to continue the discussion, please keep going, guys. Like I said, I'm not getting enough of that. I would love to have that. Like this video. Share it. Do everything you can to keep this going because I put a lot of free information out there because I want you guys to have it. Um, but I also want to still be able to, to, to wake up every day and do this, make, make this better, make you guys better. So uh, promote this stuff for me, guys. Help me promote it. I'm a one-man band doing all this. Uh, your promotion is really, really what makes the success of this approach, what allows me to get more information to you. And I'll tell you right now, guys, when I look at the science and, and the stack of, of case studies that I can get through, um, it's, it's pretty much endless. I, I'm lucky I have an access to, uh, to these medical documents uh, to get into these case studies, and, and I could be doing this for the rest of my career, and it's just gonna help you. You're just gonna get more of this great information. So help me promote it, guys. Put it out there, like it, share it, talk about it. Don't be scared to talk about it. Um, you know, don't rub it in your coach's face and don't, 
you know, make that jeopardize your chances of playing on the team. But put it out there. Tell, you know, tell the other guys that there's great information out there. You guys, you guys need to listen to this. You guys need to learn this stuff. It's going to make us better if it's your teammate. It's going to make us better so we'll compete better and we'll all get better. And that, that's what this is all about. So I hope this video helps. Uh, I want to keep doing this for you, uh, getting more great stuff out there. Um, you just keep throwing hard. Um, come down and work with us, guys. We're just, we've got a great training in the summer, 3X training. Um, that happens all summer long down here, you would love. Uh, of course, we got the amazing velocity camps that have just uh, continued to pump out 90 mile an hour pitchers. Um, and we got the program online. So uh, come on down, uh, work with us, work with me. Make yourself as good as you, you've always wanted to be because with this information, it's possible to happen in every day.